most music producers are marketing their music like it's the 1930s. Don't get me wrong, having good music is the first step in this process, but if you don't know how to market it, you might as well literally be stuck in the 1900s before we had the internet. All right, boys, recently I moved out and we have a whole new setup. Now I moved out about four hours away into this new apartment and this is where I got this week's video inspiration. On my trip moving to New York, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast. When chimps attack people, they rip your d off. And they're like, yeah, no, we don't trust you. And he brought up an older musician from the 1930s. Now, I know this sounds a little bit boring, but just give me a minute here. This man was named Robert Johnson, and for the 1930s, he was incredible. First, he actually sucked, but then he suddenly got really good. Now, keep in mind, if you do go to listen to his music, he was playing in the 1930s. You can't really compare that to the complexity of music production today. And if you still question how good he was, there is a whole Netflix documentary on him that you can watch as well. And to make it even better, there is a conspiracy that this man sold his soul to the devil. All the stories say that he was actually pretty fucking bad. And then he just like disappeared for a few weeks and became a god at the guitar. Now me personally, my favorite music conspiracy is that Taylor Swift is the reincarnated leader of a satanic cult, but that's a whole other video. Also, by the way, Producer Grind is looking for people to interview for Selling Beats Online, and I think a heat interview would be awesome, so please go at us in their comments of that IG post. Back to Robert Johnson. There are very few recordings of him, and he only ever did two studio sessions, and well, it was the 1930s. This is the same year that sliced bread was invented. So I mean, what can you really expect from music? Now, while his music was incredible, there was no way for it to be shared. From my knowledge, the only way you shared things back then was with a good old messenger bird. I brought this up because think about it. Even with all the technology we have to make and share our music in 2021, how many more great musicians do you think still get buried online? Now, if your problem is getting heard, the obvious solution is then marketing. But if you spend all your time marketing, when do you go make beats, right? I mean, after all, God tier marketing will not save a beat that sounds like this. I wanted to make a video on this because there is no right answer. It's not like a cooking recipe where there's certain measurements you have to follow. And as humans, when it comes to being creative, we don't work like that. Now, I'm going to give you an answer about balancing marketing and your beats, but it's going to be different for everybody because we all live different lives. My Friday night is not the same as your Friday night. My other interests and hobbies might not be the same as yours either. For instance, my main job is all the work I do for Heat, and then after that, I spend time with my girlfriend in the apartment, play video games, or work on other marketing projects. Usually nowadays, I myself am only making a few beats late at night. And that's just how my schedule and sacrifices work out. I mean, after all, Heat wasn't built on my production career. Back to the balancing of production and marketing. The answer is found within your productivity and your habits. One of my favorite quotes for this is, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, therefore, is not an act, but a habit. In the book, Atomic Habits, the main stressor of the book is just to get 1% better every day. And how you do that is by setting input goals. Let's take the goal of growing to 10,000 followers on your producer TikTok to help market your beats. That's known as an output goal. What we need to do is focus on the input goals. Input goals are like learning how hashtags work, what type of content your audience will respond to, and how many times to post a week. And by the way, I can tell you your content should not look like this. See, when you focus on those input goals, they actually give you a way better chance to reach your output. Now, how this all comes back to today's video topic is that it's up to you to find your input goals to manage your production and your marketing. Some people may spend 20 hours a week learning marketing, while some of you guys might just check out our weekly video and that's it. But you guys already know I have to give you a handful of input goals that I think would be helpful. Now, if I had to bet, many of you guys enjoy production more than the marketing. So maybe that means learning one new marketing tactic a week 
and learning how to implement that in your business. You can challenge yourself to read one book a week on marketing, or you can finally check out our free masterclass for selling beats online. You can find that in the description below. Peace out. Uh, we got that mom. <laughs>